Welcome to Mobile Armor Radio, the podcast for all things Mecha. Jump ship incoming. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Mobile Armor Radio, episode number 73. I am your host, Copper, today. And I'm Brian. And, oh, God, that guy. He <laughs> just never follows format. And I'm Rob. Thank you, Rob, for following format. <laughs> uh, so here we are. In, oh, it's alphabetical. Um, July. <laughs> I'm always Happy last. That's all I know. Uh, hope no one, has expo- no one exposes their fingers off in the next couple of days. Yeah, don't do that. Um, I'm I'm indifferent. If you want to blow your fingers off, go for it. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we should just move on because. What? Well, that's this is, this is like faster than Brian's intro. No, I mean, I don't, I don't <laughs> have any other banter. I mean, how, it's the summer. Stay, stay cool. No yeah. one's cool anymore. You know, we're out playing the sun. I mean, school's it's been out. Hot, it's been hot over there in the Michigans. Yeah, oh yeah, we had a, a week here where we're just upper nineties for. Several yeah. days in a row. Big yeah. storms came through the whole yeah. nine. We're in the upper 30s. Whew, I don't know what that means. That's, that's so breezy up there. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That, is that some kind of Sex in the Sea reference that you're making? I don't understand. No, it's a Celsius. Oh, Celsius. It was Excelsior. hot. Excelsior. What was that from? That's Stan Lee. Well, that's Stan Lee. That's Stan Lee. That's can... right. <laughs> <laughs> what did that? Where did I pick that up from? I know it's from somewhere. Uh, all right. He so said it a lot. Let's Excelsior on to to the dropship then, I guess. Yeah. Sure. We we yeah, got eh? some banter in there. Yeah? Gonna, yeah? Yeah, eh? Get it. Get it. Dropship landing. All right, welcome to the dropship, and I feel like this might be a fast time because I have no. bad news. I got tons. All right, good for Rob. Then. But so we'll get you uh, <laughs> good for Rob, <laughs> and then let's go with uh, Brian. Yeah. Uh, so things I've been working on, I actually have uh, started up. So uh, over at Dead Zone, the podcast. Uh, we're starting to do a slow grow for uh, Mantic's kind of Dead Zone and Firefight. Uh, style games and so with that I actually have been putting together models and painting them up uh, in this case they're so it's kind of mech adjacent because uh, you know I'm always talking about dead zone um, but I'm I'm doing the enforcers this time which is kind of my my clone like Star Wars clone army themed uh, set and as part of that I painted up a 150 point dead zone team that is the bad batch uh so a uh, bunch of of uh it's all 100 percent mantic uh models and bits and, and bobs uh but uh some some customized enforcer uh units to to match up with the uh style of the characters from the bad batch cartoon show uh and uh, had a lot of fun doing it and uh the Next step up is to do a uh, firefight. So I'm um, going to be diving into uh, getting some of my, my vehicles built for that. And if I can keep the momentum going, maybe I'll even dig out like my, my Asterian Spectra and my <laughs> Forge Father uh, Iron Hands. <laughs> not- I, I got so many, uh, so many neat cool mecha toys uh, for that game and I just I'm just terrible about building them and painting them. Well, so. did you see the uh what's in the vault for Mantic this uh month? It's I a did. whole goblin strike team with a stunt bot. That's pretty awesome. A whole goblin strike team and and in with my that guy right there, picture, yeah. This guy uh, is is available yeah. as an yeah. STL. Yeah, that's oh, awesome. You can never get yeah, it back in the day. Cool. I, I remember it was impossible to find stunt bots. Now you can just print oh, yeah. as once, many as you want. Once we went through the first run into the stunt bots, it, it, that was mm-hmm. gold. And I'm glad they're releasing it again. Yeah, yeah, I have more stunt bots out there. I think I have all the grunt bots that I want to get because I was doing painting them up as the black tri stars. <laughs> uh, but I do plan to paint up uh, some some stunt bots as Zaku's uh, when I get around to it. Cause nice. I like Gundam in my dead zone. <laughs> yeah, he's, he has themes. Yep, yep. 
but yeah, that's that's mostly what I've been uh, working on. Okay, well, I'm going to go to me, and yeah. so I have not worked on anything. Not the even... bad news is, is that I've been having problems with my painting in my right hand. Oh, no? And it's been going numb now for like eight months. Oh, just like constantly all numb. And one of our friends just had this done. So long story short, I had some tests done, and I have severe carpal done, and I yeah. have to have Oh. So I have been been painting all that well because my painting has actually been suffering because I can't grip as much. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I imagine. So uh, my hobby time is going to be fairly limited because I have to get surgery and. I think you just got to learn to paint with your left hand. Well, I would like to. <laughs> or yeah. your teeth. And having an extra Ooh. painting would be awesome. Teeth. But, I like uh, that. <laughs> yeah. So August, I'm going to have the surgery done because I can't. I was going to do it before Gen Con, but then I yeah, can't lift yeah. it for six yeah. weeks. Well, you don't, li- you don't lift anything at Gen Con anyways. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, that's why I'm the boss. Uh, He's got to lift his hand, though, to point. Yeah. Occasionally, <laughs> occasionally I help. Hey, it'd be hard to operate the uh, the machinery. So. Until. Well, yeah. You know, yeah. Occasionally I have to go in the back and lift shit to get stuff out of the way. So, but, so I'm going to do all that, and then I'll probably kick back in once I get back. Then he did say that once the surgery is done and recovery time, painting and doing all those little things with your hands, once the sutures are out and you're trying to keep the mobility and swelling down, that painting is helpful. Yeah, yeah, it'll get your mobility oh, back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, didn't, uh, I think our friend of the show, John Jack, just had that done John too. Jack just yeah. had it done yep. too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we were kind of on the same track. He just got in a little faster than I did. I kind of drugged my heels thinking, oh, it'll just get better, you know. I didn't. I did, did the typical helicopter worker just like, eh, I'm like, it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hands going numb all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's so, a pleasant story. Because, yeah, well, because of that, I haven't done any hobby. Well, that's, what was your excuse for many years before that? <laughs> oh, no, this is a reason. I know, but like you... you but why, I was powering, <laughs> I was powering through it. Sort of. And... Uh, but yes, you have a, you have a legitimate a hobby excuse. hobby in your hand <laughs> to get it working again. Yeah. I hope it's not a hobby. <laughs> I hope you have a, a professional. <laughs> <laughs> just do this on the weekend. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just so do it. Guy, just tinker. This guy in the corner, I, I met this guy at Starbucks. And he does these surgeries all the time. I was like, well, really? That's great. It's yeah. hobby. It's just, kind of the, just kind of my garage. I got a whole setup in there. <laughs> <laughs> He's a street doc. Yeah. <laughs> A ripper duck. <laughs> ripper duck, yeah. Legit. All right. Well, then, Rob, since you have, are going to carry this show, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, for some reason, I was, well, I got my printer back up and running, and there was a lot was of cool things. Or did you just put it up? No, I just didn't have it printing because there's nothing really to print. But yeah. Extra Guy, Patreon, I always mm. love his stuff. He uh, put up another heavy gear. So I got the heavy gear Kodiak. So another great large scale heavy gear mech. I love these because heavy gears, same, a little bit bigger scale, I think, than Battletech, maybe, little, maybe similar scale, but uh, yeah, this guy is huge, so it's, it's, he's my third heavy gear big mech, so I, I really enjoying these guys, so I, I printed him up, which was fun with his all these many different weapon options. Uh, extra guy also did something called the uh, Urban Defense Mech from. Uh, Appleseed, which was gigantic. He did a little mm-hmm. diorama, and uh, with a little uh, APC in there. And I have my 28 millimeter APC in this picture for scale, so you can see how big this diorama is. So how big to scale it is. <laughs> so he's it's probably like six mil scale compared to the 28. So that was really fun too. Uh, the giant base it, it didn't print great. Like I, I you know you have to orient it. It didn't fit together well, so I had to use some uh, putty to fix the seams but uh, the actual mech worked great and what else did i do i also uh river horse back in the day did a uh uh pacific ring kickstarter and it kind of uh i think it might have been even covid that it hit that they couldn't fulfill it so instead they gave us a bunch of stls for the stuff instead so i did i had printed some uh, i think i only there's like one or two i hadn't had already so i i decided to uh, rescale them for for Battletech scale, so small scale, to see how they'd work. <laughs> so they're they're like a 28 millimeter scale, uh, 
Pacific Rim models. I wanted to see how they work. Some of them have really fiddly small things, like uh, Saber Athena's sword was too small. I'll have to uh, get a sword for her. But generally, they worked, even at that scale. They're, I think usually they're like 100 millimeters. Like I dropped them quite a bit. They're like a quarter oh. scale. So, yeah. So, I, I have a whole set of those guys that I, just for kicks and giggles I did. And uh, then, the lastly, I haven't done it yet, but I blame uh, Brian on this one because uh, he made me buy this. It's it the, was uh, me. It, it was Brian. <laughs> it's the uh, Gundam Ariel kit from uh, Bandai. And, uh, yeah, I'll be putting that together. I'm sure the end result will be met next month. But, uh, yes, Brian was like, look, this is for sale. And I said, oh, damn it, I have to buy that. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, Ariel's cool. So mm-hmm. that's my dropship. I've done a lot. I, I obviously still haven't painted anything because, you know, painting is the next step i gotta i gotta get back into painting things yeah well once i get this thing done i'm definitely and once i get i'm still working on the basement once i get that done yeah it's an ongoing uh situation for sure yeah. well it's halfway done but i have i have all these new fancy paints i haven't even used yet so well, okay. no, i mean i suppose i could i could probably do well, no, because it hurts still. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. Well, I can't feel the tips of my thumb, my fingers. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I could suppose I could do the airbrush thing. Yeah, airbrush is a little bit more forgiving, especially on big things. But little yeah. guys would be hard. I mean, I wonder if I could just, if I could go back down. It, and you could just prime all, all your stuff, like just prime it, everything, and you get the right colors on everything. And then you, when yeah. you have to do the details, you could do that later. At least be all good, prepped. Yeah. Do all the prep that you hate doing because it just takes up time from the fun stuff. You could just do that There's now. So much time, yeah. Yeah. Because I'm an idiot. Well, Oop. yeah. All right. Well, then let's uh, move on to the next segment uh, the Comstar. Comstar. Let's talk some TV. Let's talk some books. Let's talk some herbages and video games. There is some stuff. All Good right. Things. Let's move out. <laughs> Message from Comstar. All right, here we are at the Comstar. Lots of things going on in the Comstar. Um, Rob, why don't you hit us out with the Comstar? Uh, a little bit of news. Uh, MechWare Five Clans. It's it's not really a expansion. It's like a whole new game, but they still call it MechWare Five because it's still using that engine. I guess that's why they do that. Uh, so it's a different game than the other MechWare Five that we were playing. Yeah. It's just this using the same engine. That's what they do with MechWarrior for some reason. They still have the same name, but it's a totally different storyline. It's uh, release date's announced. It's going to be October 3rd, so that's going to be awesome. I'll have to be picking that up because MechWarrior 5 was really fun, even if the uh, AI teammates are idiots. Yeah, (laughs) it was the AI that made me not want to play that game anymore. Yeah, they're not very smart. Well, I love playing it when it was me and you and we had those dummy heads because at least me and you get all the team up and yeah. we sometimes it, AIs they get stuck on a rock somewhere or somewhere yeah yeah or they trigger the yeah go in the wrong the spots to go yeah. off yeah so <laughs> yeah you really have to micromanage them and it's that's a pain uh the other thing is uh the uh uk games expo was uh, at this point about three weeks ago i guess but uh salvage reunion won the people's choice award for best rpg that's pretty awesome Ooh, good job yeah. Yeah. guys yeah good job salvage you guys Big fans of the show, and we're well, we're fans of theirs, and uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, and they and they like us, yeah, they 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 like us, but uh, anyways, yeah, really good to for those guys because that game is like the, the design of that book and the game itself is such a good game that yeah, even such... even my coworker was talking to me about uh, uh, BattleTech. I was wearing a BattleTech shirt, so he was talking to me about BattleTech. But then I, I was, he started to talk about RPGs and he was talking about Lancer and stuff. I'm like, you should check out Salvage Union. It's a really fun, simple game. So. <laughs> And then uh, Origins was just a, f- a week ago or two weeks ago at this point. Uh, yeah. Dream Machines from Modifius, the other mech game, won Best RPG Starter Set at the Origins Awards. So mm-hmm. mech games are winning winning awards all over the place. Yeah. Because yeah. there was no mech manufacturers at Origins. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, I, I don't know if Catalyst was there or not. I don't know. They weren't. No, they weren't there? No. Uh, Modifius is mostly well. That's an RPG, anyway. So those aren't both. Those are RPGs. They're not actual miniature games. So, yeah. Uh, the other one that, that the other news that I'm sure Brian will have much more to say on is that the Gynex went bankrupt. Brian, take it away. <laughs> yeah. So is that uh, is that laundry detergent? Yes. 
not not quite. Uh, so so Gainax, uh, you know, rose rose to fame uh, in the the uh, '90s and early 2000s uh, is with their involvement in putting out uh, a lot of classic anime such as Neon Genesis Evangelion, uh, Gunbuster, uh, Fulikuri, and and a whole mess more. Um, and so uh, in recent news, the uh, Gainax as a company has filed for bankruptcy. Um, I forgot to mention Gurren Lagann. Yeah. Uh, it was, a, <laughs> was another property of theirs. So the, the thing about that is uh, a friend of mine, uh, Celeste Darwin, went and uh, has a, a video that she posted uh, online actually doing a deep dive into it. Uh, you keep mentioning big, her, but you got to send us links. <laughs> I got to send you links. I'll send you links. Uh, well, when we when we hit the next break, um, yeah. But uh, especially since this link is live now, uh, and a, a big a big part of this is so this is like the company that uh, then kind of like not outsource, but like they. They didn't really treat their animators and artists well. Yeah. Uh, if you've if you've seen the anime, the pseudo biographical otaku no video, where where it's about two uh, two college guys that want to be the greatest otaku ever, and so what what do they do? They go into business and they find people that can make the anime that they want, so they can sell it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, there there's a big part of uh, you know there was a big fallout in that company previously with uh, where we kind of broke off with Studio Kara, which is um, Hideki Anno's uh, animation company. They did they went on to do the Evangelion movies and everything like that. Okay. Uh, and uh, and then you've got Studio Trigger, which has gone on to make you know uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners and. Uh, Delicious in Dungeon is the one that I've yeah, been watching recently, yeah. but they 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 have that really high kinetic animation style that you see like with Garen Lagan and stuff like that. Uh, they have a huge catalog themselves, and so like that the talent has left the company, uh, and so this these were the the guys kind of left holding the bag, and there's <laughs> there stands to reason and and. Uh, that they were probably not the the greatest guys uh, to be working with. So the fact that they have officially gone belly up is probably for the best. Um, yeah. Ironically, it's the, they're starting to sell off some of their uh, old shows that you know we now get the sequels of, like the Fully Cooley and and um, another show which which I won't mention here. Uh, <laughs> Because you get made fun of. <laughs> <laughs> so they made an anime called Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt. Nice. It's that kind of shows, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and it's getting a second season now. After <laughs> there's fans after after leaving off on a cliffhanger for about ten years. <laughs> fans so. clamored for more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, more more power to you, I guess. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah. So uh, we'll we'll if it's cool with everybody, I'll share that that video. Um, sure. I definitely recommend checking it out. Big deep dive into it, uh, and and really, you know, at the end of the day, the a big part of this is making sure that the people that did the work, uh, and that they kind of are appreciated and supported going forward, and and those that took advantage of them, um, you know, don't. And I think I, I read that most of the Part rights, of the people. most of the rights are reverting to the creators too. So that's, mm -hmm. they'll, oh, they'll that's get, good. yeah. So they're yeah. going to get all these shows back. So as long as they get their stuff back, that's yeah. great. That, that's how like Anno was able to make the Evangelion movies yeah. because his, his wife uh, was a copyright lawyer and was <laughs> able to make the cases like, Hey, you, you own the intellectual property here. That company does not. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you don't want uh, just a company just leeching off the the actual creatives. So, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a good thing they went bankrupt, which was good, sort of. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, they, they weren't they weren't doing much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was the final gasp, as it were. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the last thing that I did was I watched Godzilla minus one. It's 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 not really uh, mech related. There's no mecha Godzilla in it yet. So <laughs> kaiju, <laughs> kaiju is close, but it's such a good movie. I, all the praise it's been getting, like. It, it blew me away, even even after knowing a lot about it and stuff. It still was, like, an amazing movie. Like, it's actually a piece of art. It's not just a kaiju movie, you know? It's almost like the original Godzilla was, like, same way. Like, and then it became schlocky as it went. This is yeah. back to back to the roots. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it was actually pretty good. I, I watched it, too. And when he when he first uses his uh, nuclear atomic breath, man, that's such a scene. That was so cool. Yeah, it's a good one. Anyways, yeah, I'm sure it's on Netflix, I think. So I'm sure everybody's watched it at this point, but... If not, watch it. Definitely, because it, it goes back to uh, World War Two Godzilla, not the. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's it's well, that's why you call it minus one. It's it's kind of like the, if Godzilla is zero, we've got first Godzilla is zero here, right? This is the minus one. Yeah. It's the one before it. So, mm-hmm. fun. Anyways, that's uh, my calm star. Who's next? Um, Brian, you were done, right? Or no, you? I was first. Ah. So. <laughs> Well, you gave it, you you sent it to Brian for. I did throw it so over I, to I, for the guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just just for the guy next thing. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think the only thing was is uh, there was a sale going on on the Switch, and so I I picked up uh, <laughs> the Shadow Run uh, collection by uh, um, Hairbrain Scheme. Such a good game. Uh, which is which is the three games. Yeah. And. I'm I'm playing a fantasy game right now, but the all three games are sitting right there, yeah. and every time I see it, I'm like, I want to play Dragon Fall again. Yeah, <laughs> such such a game. Like, those games were so much fun, uh, I wish... and I never played the Hong Kong one, so yeah. I'm like, they're all good. Oh, the Hong Kong one's really good. They're all good. Like that's the like that's the beauty of the, that Hairbrain schemes. I, they haven't really made a bad game for me. So, hmm. no, they've been they've been awesome, uh, but otherwise, uh, that's kind of been. It uh, continuing my playthrough of Halo Two with my yeah. my brother on Legendary, which is still a, a <laughs> difficult venture to be sure. Especially so, tip to anybody else that's <laughs> deciding to play this uh, on on Xbox Live. There, uh, the Anniversary Edition in particular, don't use the cloaking. Is it ever, like a glitch? <laughs> because it will. Disconnect your Oof. game, and you will have to start the level over. And just every time you use cloaking, at, at least at least twice that yeah. happened to us, and we you figured out you what know, it was at least half hour forty five minutes in uh, yeah. of a of a, a game that's like if one of you dies, you you both restart. And there's no saving your progress as you go in that. <laughs> no, no. Well, that's the legendary thing. That's... Beginning beginning to end. Yeah. So, uh, just a tip: don't. Don't when cloak. cloak. <laughs> when you're the arbiter. All right, that's that's uh, that's all I really got. Um, I think I'll come up with something later. I'm sure. Because okay. I always forget. Yeah. Pat. So, oh uh, yeah, I don't have much either. I did watch Godzilla minus one finally. Uh, as far as other mechs and other things are concerned, I haven't seen much. I am excited though for. I think it was there's a new Ultraman series coming out on Netflix. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I forget what it's called. Is it called. Was it called Origins? I think there's the old one was Origins, wasn't it? Yeah, I think. I but it's know. Ultraman something. It might have been not, uh, Ultraman minus one. There was an Ultraman minus one too, wasn't there? Well, there was a Shin Ultraman, but I think that that came out a couple of years ago now. Yeah, that was a couple of years ago. So, uh, but it's a new cartoon, new anime. Uh, it's a little bit different. Ultraman than, Rising. Right? It's called Ultraman Rising. Ultraman Rising. Yeah, that's the one. So I'm excited for that. I mean, even though it's not really Mecha in, in general, but he just falls into my love of Mecha because he's sort of Mecha. He could be. He's, a an, he's an alien. <laughs> well, he's I mean, a giant like alien. The, what was the the Ultraman uh, origin one? Those guys were wearing suits. Yeah, that's right. So yep. It wasn't an alien. That in tra- the com- well, he was. The guy was an alien in a suit. He did transform into Ultraman. Yeah, like the original Ultraman did. That's right. In the comic books, so. it was uh, there was people impersonating the Ultraman, causing trouble that were wearing like robot suits. So. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah, Comstar not too much. I mean, you know, 
uh, hampered. Plus, it's also close to Gen Con. I've been doing a lot of. It's coming up quick. And it's then the end of this month. And then the Adepticon's already started. For next year? Yeah. I, the hotel thing's launching. That, that was a whole nother. Oh, yeah, because it's Adepticon's moving uh, to Milwaukee. Milwaukee. And Milwaukee. Apparently, the non exhibitor link, uh, those hotels sold out in four minutes. Ooh. Uh, yeah. The uh, I'm reading about Gen Cons, like the history of Gen Con, and Gen Con when it went to Mecca in Milwaukee, which is where Adepticon's going. They it, it was a big issue then too, so it's nice to know it's uh, things have not changed in uh, what 40 years, so no, yeah. less than 30 years probably. <laughs> fun, okay. Oh, I bet you sit up more Gen Con. I just said fun. No, it's good job. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, then let's move on to the Mech Bay Hangar and let's just talk about what's going to be going down the pipe. Fun times. Now entering the Mech Bay Hangar. All right. Welcome to the Mech Bay Hangar. This is a little roundtable topic today. Uh, so this week, or this month, I wanted to chat. Uh, so... A little preface here. I've been on eBay again. No, no. Oh, Nostal- no. Nostalgically mm-hmm. buying uh, uh, West End Games Grandier, uh Star Wars models. Oh, yeah. Uh, the not models, figures. The min- the lead figures. The minis, yeah. Figures, whatever you want to call them. Mm-hmm. The minis. And it got me to thinking because, you know, while I've been able to find some of these that are fairly uh, affordable, there are also listings that are fairly unaffordable (laughs) and I was thinking to myself well if money was no object what old toy collectibles would I want to get that are hard to find now or just kind of out of reach in a sense Uh, and so I wanted to, to run through that see touch a little bit of nostalgia see and reminisce about the things that we could have had or did have, and let's slip through our fingers. Well, that's a yeah, that's a whole other show. That's a whole. That's a whole <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, or you still have? <laughs> yeah. So, why don't we start off with? Uh, oh, Christ, you, 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 Brian, me. Well, you haven't started right. first yet. All right. Well, I'm the host. Well, uh, we usually have the host lead the. Uh, Pat, he's in charge. He can do what he wants. You can do what you want. You don't tell me what to do. I'm in charge. Who's going first then? Just so I know. Don't go first. You guys have now shame me, and I feel like I have to go <laughs> Okay, what's your first one? Uh, so we'll go with the old 19... I'm going to try and go in decades here. So we're going to bring it back to like late 1970s. And we're going to talk about the old Shogun Warriors that were based on Mazinger... And oh, I can't even remember the other two robots because there was a, initially three robots that were released. Uh, I would like to say they're ginormous, but it, I was also maybe they're four they're, feet qu- tall. they're like they're quite big. They're like two feet yeah. tall. Yeah, but they seem more ginormous. And they, and their hands would shoot off. Yeah. They had the zinger would it had the plane that would dock into his head just like the cartoon. Uh, <laughs> I wish I can remember. Does anyone remember? I like can't remember. They're, they're, yeah, I can't remember what the other two were. I just before know the Before my time. <laughs> it's before my uh, time. Well, no, actually, I was probably alive, but I wasn't playing with toys. I was playing with <laughs> rattles at that point. <laughs> so it was just me. Uh, but these were oh, anime robots. That first time they, that kind of stuff and was brought, brought to the States. Over. Yeah, and yeah. they brought them over and renamed mm. them. Uh, Problem was they're super expensive. One of, them, one of them was Maz- Mazinger. Yeah. And they called him Mazinga. <laughs> Mazinga. Mazinga. Yeah. So the I wish it would list the first three, but it's, it shows them. Yeah, there's a bunch Not of them. Martin Zinger. <laughs> yeah. Dimos was uh, was one of them. And is, is there a Goldar one? I know you, that's always a show. We talk about. <laughs> that was before the Goldar was before this, but this is the first. Yeah. Get a robot. G was one. Guy King was another, which was Dino Met Guy King. Uh, he's the one that had the the face on his chest. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, there was a there was a gold no. Uh, the robot Grin Grinazir was was one. They, what did they call him? They call him Goldorak. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> they, and Raiding the Brave was one. Raiding, yeah. Raiding the Brave, Gold, Mazinger, and I think Goldrack were the original three. Uh, yeah, the problem with this line was even at the time it was super expensive. Like, that was the problem. Oh, yeah. I had I had one and, you know. Yeah, I think. I there, don't know how I got it. I think of my, you know. There was definitely one in my sphere of influence. Somebody, cousin or someone had one because I remember <laughs> shooting the hands off at people and stuff. But, yeah, that's why it was unsuccessful. It was just too expensive for the time. Yeah. I mean, they, they still put out a bit, but, you know, that was back in the day. With, yeah. You had to, you had to really they save up. They even, they even put a Godzilla one out. Did they? The same company? That's funny. It, yeah. Mattel, a little bit later. Uh, after the original three, they put out five more, I think. And there was a lot. And Godzilla yeah. were one of them. That's funny. Were two of them. Um, but yes. But classic that, Shogun you know, Warriors. That would be my first pick. Nice. And then Brian, what do you got? So uh, I think my first pick, uh, you know, I, I I pulled pulled deep back uh, to to 1994. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I like you know grew up watching Voltron and and uh, a few other uh, anime cartoons and everything where I could get them, uh, and got into Power Rangers and whatnot. But there was uh, an adjacent tokusatsu type show called Samurai Cyber Squad mm-hmm. or, or Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. They it's, it's, all spelled with S. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the uh, was it? Uh, who was it that did all those ones? The uh, Saban. He loved his alliteration. Saban, yeah. He loved his alliteration. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. And uh, uh, and so if you're familiar with the more recent Gridman, yeah. uh, to uh, I think that actually might be Studio Trigger. Uh, <laughs> to to mention them again, uh, so this is like kind of the original series that it was based off of. Uh, in fact, I think the Gridman is it S S S S is a reference to the Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Um, and so the the premise of the show is like they're they're kids and then they go into uh, the digital realm and they have their cyber warriors. Yeah, it was like the beginning of uh cyberspace and uh they that was like hey, let's like just Reboot take advantage out, yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's 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 the hot hot craze in nineteen ninety four and uh there was one uh mech that that I really liked the design of. So he had a suit but then there would also be like parts that would combine onto his suit. Uh, and I think it's Formo. Uh, so if if uh, Rob's sharing the one that's in the packaging, <laughs> uh, uh, I uh, actually had I have this one uh, still. Uh, somehow it is it is survived. I don't think I have the gun anymore, but I do have the the sword and the shield. Uh, and uh, and and it's it's just kind of a, an action figure rotates its arms and whatnot. It looks really cool. But I do want to mention, uh, for the purposes of this uh, segment, so my neighbor growing up had the one that is like a foot and a mm. half tall, and that the parts, uh, like all the the shoulders and the gauntlets and the legs and everything, like that was all there was a there was a torso, like a smaller action figure that these parts would then combine on top of. Uh, and it was always so much fun to, to go hang out with him and, and play with that and, and G.I. Joe figures and hit them out of a bush with a, <laughs> <laughs> a little hook. Fortune with I, the... You, you know that line in, in Tommy Boy about growing up underneath the power line? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of like that, but... Um, <laughs> But no, it, like that was it was a really fun source of bonding uh, that I had with a, a neighbor <laughs> kid who was a couple years older than me, uh, and so it, like that that action figure is is one that still like is in the back of my mind as like man that thing was really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think I think it's called Formo, uh, is is the name of it, and uh, and so yeah, there's a big version of it as well. Yeah, back in the day, they do multiple scales and all those toy lines. They, they any way you could get it, they'd put it out. So especially the uh, Power mm-hmm. Rangers, they had all different scales for those guys. Yeah, but same company, so, so makes sense. 
Yeah. Uh, so that's my my first one. I know I'll kick it over to Rob. Uh, my first one is uh, it's a, actually a newer newer toy, but the uh, the from the back in the day is the uh, Vehicle Force Voltron or Dairuger fifteen. They they knew the uh, was it Chukogan Spirit Spirit or what, that one is amazing. Super expensive, like eight hundred dollars. But <laughs> even back in the day, they had uh, the the car robots forming into Voltron. They had all the separate ones that could form up. It wasn't as cool as this one, but uh, it, uh, yeah, I, I I love Car Car Voltron so much more than than Lion Voltron that it's. Uh, I hope they do what they did for the. I don't think they will because they. This is more of the Japanese line. They never really. This toy never really made it in the states because that series wasn't as popular as the Lion series. That's why they went back to the Lions. But uh, Car 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 Voltron with some cool models 15 vehicles forming together to make a giant robot what more do you want that's what i say <laughs> but uh yeah plus it was sure. the better it was the better story of them all honestly yeah well it was yeah for sure i like the original I mean, the lions were the lions but you know yeah. the the vehicles especially if you watch yeah. the dairuger actual anime it's it's actually yeah. really really good so. i actually rolled into voltron from the vehicles the oh yeah I saw the lions. that's funny <laughs> yeah. It's then you're yeah you're been being like wow this is a lot more childish the, the lions but yeah well the lions were I thought were cool too because you know it's lions yeah. but you know. not as cool as but, the Thundercats uh, <laughs> no Thundercats <laughs> anyways oh. that's my first one that was Vehicle Voltron Pat, all right so then we're gonna move on into the eighties now we're in nineteen eighty seven <laughs> and we're gonna talk about the Robotech toys that Matchbox released and I. Found an old Sears catalog, big wish list catalog picture of all the Robotech toys that Matchbox put out, and these things are super expensive. Yeah. Oh yeah, because it's like that SD uh, number E, the SDF one that's running for five hundred bucks now. Just oh yeah. Toy. I'm sure you looked it up, but yeah, even they had like a, a the whole control base, the the hanger. Yeah, for I couldn't it. find the control base, but I found I the SDF one. A lunk, the figure lunk. I think he's in that picture somewhere. Yeah. I had all the, I had, I had the action figures. I never had any of the vehicles. I had the figures. Yeah, I'd like the Dana Sterling is. I think she is a hundred and something odd bucks. See, I had some of those. But yeah. uh, and then you let them slip through your fingers. Yeah, but yeah, I would love to have the, uh, the obviously the officer's pod because it's a Marauder. But uh, it's just the, uh, yeah, this is it's a great toy line. A little, little yeah, uh, yeah. super deformed a bit, but still. Not bad. Yeah, I mean, but you know, it was, first of all, it was Matchbox, and then it was also 1980s toys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Invid looks cool. Uh, I remember the pilots all had helmets that would go on the toys too. Yes, yeah. and the, I like the fact that the Zentradi Warriors were also bigger than the. Yeah, they're big. Yeah. Warriors. Yeah, they weren't as so. big as they should be, but they were big. Yeah. No, I mean, but you know, of course, in '87, I was a little too old for these toys. Yeah. See, I was right in the. I was too poor for these toys. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't think I really uh, knew about them at that time. It was only later I found out. Let's take them. a look. I mean, the original, the original price of the SDF one was only thirty six bucks, eighty seven. That's eh, a little bit expensive. This playset was sixty bucks at the time. That would have been crazy expensive. I I, yeah. I still was not around yet. Yeah, <laughs> right. the action figures are eleven bucks a pop. Yeah, see, that. back then that's like when you're buying GI Joes for two bucks. Like that's a lot, right? Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Is it eleven bucks for a set of three though? Yeah, it must be. Yeah, it's one, it two. Yeah, like yeah. It. yeah. It looks, still, yeah, it that's like expensive. Silver. Still, yeah. Justin, for inflation, that's like five hundred dollars. <laughs> but I do like the fact that they put up the white base, or not the white base, the SDF one place yeah. that closed up, so it looks like the bridge. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you could the one side. Yeah, it's and then it opens up. Yeah, it's cool. Very cool. I'm sure it was all cardboard, but still, maybe yeah, not. It's cardboard and it looks like plastic. Could be, could be like the uh, GI Joe bases in, back in the day. Yeah, <clears throat> Brian, what's your next one? Uh, my next one, uh, again, kind of, kind of hinted at this earlier. Power Rangers was another uh, big part of, of my mecha uh, growing up, and uh, the the Megazord, and, and really like all of them. I'd probably say up to, um, I'm trying to remember when it was cars. <laughs> uh, I, I forget which turbo turbo, turbo uh, yep. power Rangers turbo. Like I was, I was on the power Rangers hype train 
uh, for that period. Yeah, of you time. you were the right age, I think. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I was, I was, I was, was old. age for it. Yeah. I was past the Power Rangers. Yeah, I was. And I was so, just like, past Power Rangers. Yep. Just all the cool mech designs from from you know the Green Rangers, Dragon Zord, uh, the the Megazord itself when it could combine, yeah. and then you know going going to see the Power Rangers movie in theaters. Yeah, big time. And, uh, kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I never, uh, yeah, I never got around to actually owning one of the Megazords, but like that original classic design and, and kind of the subsequent ones for that first show, uh, I was always a huge fan of that. And I think I had, we had some of the old McDonald's toys, uh, for the movie premiere. And, and it was, it was just these like hard plastic, they were kind of like that big. Uh, and had a little seat for for was someone that to guy, the Green around. Ranger in the movie, or is he the White Ranger? In the movie? He's the White Ranger by the movie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think the Did thing he is, die? yeah, he. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, David Franks. I think Frank. Yeah. Uh, the thing about these toys, you can still get like the new versions of these. They still make Power Rangers toys. Like they're still out there. Oh yeah. So it's yeah, there's pretty so cool. Many Power Rangers out there. You don't know which one you're getting. If well, you, I think they. <laughs> I guess if you're not a Power Rangers fan, you don't know where you're rolling because yeah, off the top of my head, I think the one that I know is the one that I think Brian you started with, right? Those were the, the originals, dinosaurs, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, the dinosaurs, yeah. That that's the original Megazord. Uh, but uh, and there was like Ninja One I seen during oh, yeah, one. Tons. Was the Ninja yeah. One. Yep. There's like literally after a while they just had every season was a different Zord because they, yeah. they had because in Japan they only had certain amount of episodes so they had to keep getting new episodes <laughs> and, and then and Power then, Ranger bees they were all like bees but they keep the same uh, humans for the for the American bits so they had to like figure out and then they switch some of them out and it would be like yeah figure out how to fit always, them into the scenes. Always a fun scenes. time when you, you kind of Frankenstein a show together. Yeah, it's pretty amazing what they could do, yeah. It's like, like you think Robotech, like, that was the first one that kind of did that, but then after that, man, they, they, they took it and ran with oh. it. Mm-hmm. But, it, was, it, was, it was the state of state of play. Uh, it's pretty but, crazy. But, uh, Rob, what's, what's your uh, next one? Uh, where are we? We're on uh, number two. This one is, uh, this one is very cool to me because this... It was a little after my time, but not by much. But it's uh, Exo Squad. They uh, powered armor, really cool mechs, and it, the the actual cartoon was way ahead of its time. Yeah, it was, I mean, it's, it's yep. funny you say that too, because after talking about the the Robotech one, the Matchbox Robotech one, yeah, they also made an Exo Squad set of toys that were also similar to the some of the vehicles in Robotech. Well, they did I don't want to spoil your last one, but they did definitely did uh BattleTech stuff, so they oh, there was a 100%. lot of there was a lot of licensing going on, but uh yeah, anyways, these powered armor suits. Now, once again, to get these are super expensive now to buy them, but uh the cartoon is great. The toys were ahead of their time. You could get little guys to go inside the suits, so it wasn't just, you know, they actually wore the suits and it was pretty cool. So it's uh, a, a a hidden gem from the I guess it was '90s by then. It must have been just early '90s, I would think. And uh, Exo Squad is fun times. Watch the uh, show because it's worth it. It's, it's only one season, I think, and it was uh, pretty bloody for a kid show. It's very very Japanese. That's all I'm saying. So that's my okay. number two. All right. So my last one. And we're going to move into the 90s, uh, around 1994, right around the Battletech animated series. And we're going to talk about the Battletech animated series toys that Tyco, and if you know who Tyco is, Tyco was the original company that made the slot racing car sets that you would yeah. pull the trigger and they would fly off the track and you'd have to go run after them. Uh, <laughs> uh, but they Tyco made RC. Set, yeah. <laughs> So they made a set of Battletech toys uh, based off the animated series. And I think they did two or three series. They might have did two series, I think. And the first series had, like, most of the main characters from the cartoon, like... Uh, the Axeman. A- Adam, yeah, Adam Steiner in there. Yeah. And the thing I remember with Adam Steiner the most, and this is what I want to talk about, is because they, you got the mech, you got the figure, you got the weapons, and... Uh, the pilot each got a neuro helmet that you would put on when you put him in it. 
and the neuro limit is so ridiculous looking it made him look like uh manny faces from he-man hey well, that's <laughs> the thing is that's pretty accurate too what the uh neuro helmets look like in battle tech so well yeah i just but it, that's a, that's the one thing i could take away is that uh his uh neuro helmet made him look like manny faces from he-man i was like yeah, I'm pretty sure it's this toy it line like that uh, Exo Squad took the same designs and later on it just reused them in uh, Exo Squad's uh, BattleTech line too. I think it's all the same yeah. uh, line. There were five mechs released in and the there's... first wave, uh, which was the Axeman, the Marauder, the Thor, the Hunchback, and the Bushwhacker. Uh, there were three combat armors and a aerospace spider, which I think was the Banshee. Yeah, and then they later ones they had some other ones. They had the Mauler came out and uh, yeah, the Mauler, let's see. Crab, is it? Yeah, Mauler and the the Tiger. No, he's the, that's a power suit. Yeah. And the so the, the only different one was the Mauler. They didn't, um, uh, not much in the, uh, is there any, I don't think there's any uh, clan mechs. That's no, funny. That's the, weird. The, um, was the clan part of the animated series? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, they were fighting Jade Falcon. That's right. That's where the uh, uh, "How dare you refuse my uh, bachelor is uh, that meme is from is from that show. Well, it, it maybe was the vulture was that a clan mech? Oh yeah, maybe vulture was yeah. Okay, so there was a vult. I'm looking at some notes here, and I wrote down vulture. There was a vulture prototype that never made it. To... Uh, well, the series did f- crash and burn very quickly. Yeah, so. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't make it. The, the, well, from what I read, they don't know if it made it to production. But there is definitely prototypes of the Vulture mm. out there, and the pilot is supposed to be that Kristen Rebin from... Uh, she was Jade Falcon, right? I don't remember. Yeah, because she had the tattoo on the face. Yeah, yeah. On the eye. I bet those prototypes are worth a pretty penny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you can find the prototypes, or if you have the prototypes. Even the even the regular Battletech, they're, like, they're expensive still. Because I, I always say it, if there's a crossover, if you're getting toys from something that's also popular somewhere else, you're always going to be more expensive. Like Pat was talking about his uh, Star Trek miniatures or Star Wars miniatures. Mm. It's because Star Wars fans buy them and miniature people buy them. So it's, this yeah. is like toy fans buy this plus battle tech guys are nuts and they'll pay tons of money for crazy <laughs> stuff. So, Oh yeah. And, you know, so, uh, but again, I was a little too old for these, but I was not too old for battle tech at that point because I loved battle tech. Yeah. And, I didn't dive into the toys at that point. And, you know, we all had that hindsight. I think, you know, we all knew comic books would be, but you never thought toys would take off like this back yeah. back then. Especially, yeah. Because yeah. toys got destroyed. That's why. That's why. Yeah. They... I mean, you know, I mean, did anyone who's got in the box, say, in the box, Boba Fett from right. the Kenner, yeah. the Kenner line, did anyone know when they bought that or when they got that, the, that that there... was going to be? There was like Uber yeah, fans like would buy who would buy them not to play with them just to buy them like there were some people like that but most yeah. kids ripped up like I did ripped it open and played with it and yeah. destroyed it and it's dog or you ripped on. it open or you ripped it open and played with it in line while you're checking yeah, out exactly <laughs> eventually the dog so, chewed off its hands you know that kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> so I mean I guess the ones who would have bought those were probably the older yeah that's what I'm saying older fans buy them. But, Maybe, oh, this might be a collectible. Yeah, kids, even just to collect them like we do. Like, you collect some things. I don't really like mint and box, but a lot of people collect mint and box. Yeah. I always open my toys. i got to play with them. Yeah. Yeah. I do have some carded G.I. Joe 25th anniversary stuff, but that's, that's the... Well, I will say with carded. those Battlestar Galactica ships that I got from Eagle Moss, mm. I did take them out so they could be displayed, but I did keep the boxes. Well, yeah, but that's different. Those are, those are actual statues. That's different than a yeah. toy that you could lose all the bits for and break. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, Brian, what, what's your last pick? Uh, so my last pick um, was, I, I mean, you kind of mentioned in, in Robotech, uh, the SDF one has, has always been one that it's like every now and then I'll see like a model kit mm. for it or or you know, something post online, and I'm just like, ah oh, man, that'd be so cool to have. And then I look at the price tag, and I look at my bank account, and I yeah, look at yeah. the price tag, and I look at my bank account, and it uh, it, it just doesn't line up. No. Um, maybe maybe one day, um, but you know, with how many of my uh, action figures and model kits are just kind of 
hanging out in storage mm-hmm. right now, um, just kind of for space reasons. Uh, it's like, you know, it's it's probably fine that I don't have that one yet. But uh, I always love the SDF one, and uh, in in both ship mode and uh, you know standing up, those two the the original aircraft carrier designs yeah. uh, is just so cool to me, and um, and and they made some amazing toys uh, and models for for that uh, particular piece. So. Uh, Maybe one day we'll, we'll see about getting that. Well, I was trying to find a uh, 3D print of this, and it, you can't even find a 3D print out there. Like it's, hey, extra really? guy, extra guy, if you're li- listening, this is what we want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think I've stumbled on a couple. I, I found um, one. Uh, I tried to print it, and it was it fa- like it wasn't very well the, done. The, so the, I couldn't I couldn't speak to the quality of them. Yeah. Uh, I have not tried to print any. So yeah. So uh, but, uh, it is cool. The SDF one is iconic. Mm-hmm. It's behind your head. <laughs> it is. There's the ship. There it is. Uh, uh, so, Rob, what's what's your last one? Well, my last one is probably pretty predictable for me, but it's the uh, G1 Jetfire with all its bits. I do have a G1 you Jetfire. Love, you, do love, you do love the Jetfire, don't you? Oh, yeah, I love him. But uh, I do have one, but he's doesn't have any of his armor, doesn't have any of those super bits, and one of his arms broken. So I have one that's <laughs> – he's armless. He's got one arm. But to see one like the picture here where it's beautifully, the paint still, like, this paint is notorious for yellowing. Like, it's it's just, if you find one that's not yellow, it's rare. So, to, <laughs> to find one mint in box or even out of box, but all its bits that, and it's not yellowed, that, that would be my dream to get to a good G1 jet fire. He is so cool. He is obviously... It is from Macross. He is, he is legitimate. <laughs> so much so that they uh, Harmony Gold, since they brought over Robotech, sued Transformers so that he was taken out of the show and became, uh, uh, instead of Jetfire, he, or instead of, uh, yeah, Jetfire, what did he become? I can't remember what he's, he, they changed the name to. But he had a different name and he had a different look. He had a much squarer nose and they changed a lot of it so it was different from Jetfire, but... Oh man, back in the day. Once again, I think I had a friend who had him, so that was uh, I coveted him. <laughs> but to find him with all the bits, like that nobody ever has all the arm and leg and back armor, it's it's always missing. So, and notoriously easy to break. Like the both the arms and the legs are just fragile as hell. So <laughs> they, they don't make <laughs> toys like like do do now. Back then, it was just like. I guess Japanese kids were just gentler on their toys. <laughs> so yeah. They were more respectful. They were taught to value their toys. I That's guess. right. Because, uh, yeah, it's hard to find them in, in together. Like, you find broken ones pretty cheap, but to find mint in box or with all the bits, it's very hard. So, or it's not hard. They're out there. It's just super expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the difference. But, yes. <laughs> that was a good talk, Pat. I think that was a good choice because uh, yeah. yeah. I do like going over the old toys. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I could, when I was, you know, every once in a while, I get a wild hair in my butt and start to buy old stuff again and bring them back. Well, we also uh, I'm careless, careless in my life <laughs> with stuff. And and Voltron, uh, Lion Force Voltron, probably would have been on a list, but we did get the uh, 40th anniversary or whatever. It's coming to us, so we're yes, gonna have it. And it's not, and it's not the original. One. I'm talking, yeah. Well, we'll this is it's based on the original one, so yes, which mm-hmm. which is nice and stuff. So yeah. But, uh, yeah, I remember having the, the original Lion Force back in the day, and that was very cool. But, yeah, yeah, the, this is a, right. a happy replacement. So Yeah, it's nice, and these, it's good to see these things. And, like, when we were doing, when I was doing the research for this, uh, finding that Sears catalog picture, I was like, yeah. oh, God. Sears catalog was yeah. the, the bottom. I remember just, you know, me and the sister would just sit there, and we would circle things yep. and earmark, mm-hmm. and then, my parents would even look at the Sears magazine. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it was, yeah, I was big into G.I. They, Joe. They so. Give it to us. Find out, show us what you want for Christmas, and then we would get nothing. You get a bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, Circle I, a whole bunch of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, G.I. Joe's was my big thing. So, uh, but just like, it was always like beautiful, like dioramas, too, that they had in the Sears catalog where you, everything was set out. Oh, it yeah. wasn't just pictures of the items, they, they actually set it up. Like, it's, if it, you're a young kid who hasn't never, had the pleasure you can find old Sears catalogs and go or the wish book do you remember the wish book like the oh yeah 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 Christmas one specific that had all the <laughs> it was the Christmas one's the bomb yeah 
Plus, the, the lingerie section was awakening for young boys. <laughs> well, I got a story about that. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Not in the show. <laughs> save it for, save for, it for the after hours. For radio. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you know, it's just how I got myself almost kicked out of school. <laughs> well, save it for after show. But uh, that's it for the Mech Bay, I think. Repat. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to Dexter and let's close it. Let's close this uh, month out. Before we get X-rated. Let's x fill out of here. All right, here we at the Xville. Good talk, nostalgia. Love seeing the old toys. Uh, of course, now that we're in our golden years. Oh, <laughs> Brian's not old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have more appreciation for when I get some, or some of these things come out, holding on to them a little bit better or things like that. You know, but still, toys are toys and they should be played with at some mm-hmm. point too yeah. also uh, so if you're a kid don't feel bad for playing with toys if you're watching this show play with your toys just play don't toys. just don't break the arms off them. You know right. be gentle they'll lose their value that way because <laughs> there'll be a jet fire out there who doesn't have an arm oh. and there'll be one guy who has it and he'll be sad i i'm i'm happy to have him but i'm sad he has no arm <laughs> but uh if we want to talk modern toys that i want there's a uh G.I. Joe and Transformers do crossovers and they I have the his tank in Baroness. It's uh it's his tank transforms into uh Megatron and comes uh, with a Baroness awesome. figure. And it's a scale of the three and three quarter scale is it, figures. Is it the Sienna Miller Baroness? No, it's the real Baroness. And but they did uh, the only one that thought Sienna Miller was super hot as a brunette. I like the Scarlet in those movies, so um anyways. I remember the G.I. Joe movies. They're terrible. <laughs> But they have. They the, are terrible. They made a uh, a uh, Oz striker that turned into Bumblebee, and but they also made the uh, Thunder Machine, the Dreadnoughts Thunder Machine, which I loved as a kid. Anyways, that was a, I had that one. And it was awesome. But it transforms into uh, Soundwave. I want that one so badly, but it's so expensive. It's like 150 bucks or something stupid. And I'm like, ah, oh, God, oh, it's so nice hmm. though. Your your version of expensive, my version. Oh uh, yeah, Pat, that would be, that'd be nothing for Pat. <laughs> That's Canadian dollars. <laughs> it's it's expensive, but uh, yeah. Soundwave is my favorite transform. Yeah, he's cool, but and the and the dreadnoughts are my favorite GI Joes. So, anyways, mm-hmm. so. That's that's my little two cents about nostalgia and how I still have nostalgia for things that just came out like earlier this year. So. <laughs> yeah, I want you know, and plus, when I was doing all the ebay searching and i also thought about the thunder uh, the thunder jesus christ i can't seem to speak the voltron lion uh, models that we're going to be getting uh yeah the originals <laughs> yeah it's gonna be cool mm-hmm. so uh it's good times and it was a good good fun walking down memory lane yes uh, and stuff like that so all right well then i guess we can wrap it up yeah Close it out. Follow us on those Pull social the medias. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're on we're on like, X. Share, subscribe. We're on uh especially on Facebook. We have a big Facebook. We do have a Discord that barely ever use. But uh definitely yeah, a lot of action on X but for uh if you look up work mobile armor radio. radio. No. Yeah, just well it's a lot of interaction. And YouTube. Yeah. YouTube's obviously where this is and uh, also, uh, Facebook, which we have a lot of discussion there too, and a lot of pictures get posted and whatever. Any news yeah. that comes up, we post on there. So, check out the, our affiliate podcast if you like anything from Romantics Dead Zone. Listen to Dead Zone the podcast if you are <laughs> our old RPG or D and D, and a big fan of Dragon Magazine. Listen to the Dragon's Tome and uh, where they go over every Dragon Magazine. They, from one as in us. <laughs> well, not here. Two thirds of us. <laughs> Two thirds. <laughs> they. And uh, half of us are on uh, Dead Zone the podcast, and two thirds of us are on, uh, <laughs> half of Dead Zone the podcast, and two thirds of Dragon Stone. So, uh, so feel free to check out those podcasts, video casts, whatever you want to call them now. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, yep. then let's wrap it up. Yep. Right. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, comment. Subscribe. We love Thanks comments. Uh, and, and, and post any nostalgic yeah. uh, uh, toys that you liked. Well, growing probably, up or wish you had. Or... Yeah. We'll probably be at Gen Con by the time. Yes, by the next episode. The August yep. episode drops next episode. So uh, I'll say it now. Booth 1515, me and Rob will be there. Come say hi. Well, Brian, Mobile Arm Radio. You're not going, Brian? I'm, no. I won't make it this year. You're a terrible person. 
You should be taking your wife to that. She would love that. Lucy. Oh, she would. Yeah, for sure. I don't know why. She, she, uh, it's a lot of people. Uh, it's, a lot of people. <laughs> it's a lot of people, but it's a lot of role yeah. playing. It's a that's her mecca. Yeah. yeah. Just remember the role playing games mostly are in the hotels, so they're not in the big area. Right. Right. So yeah. it won't be as many people. That being said, it's still a lot of people. <laughs> it's still a lot of people. It'd be a lot one, of people. One year, one year. I'll yeah. make sure we get out there. Yeah. Yeah. All you right. got to try it. For the mobile arm radio, then I've been your host, Chopper. I'm Brian. I'm Rob. And we will see you again next month and at Gen Con. Hopefully. Yay. Say hi. Woo-hoo. Gee. Gee, what's that? Gen Con. For Gen Con. You, look like, you look like Wing Chun Master going on there. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, it's like, how do you get a G? Hey, Ip Man. <laughs> I mean, hit the placard now. <laughs> this has been Mobile Armor Radio. Join our Facebook group by searching for Mobile Armor Radio. Find us on Twitter at M Armor Radio. Join us on the first of every month for more mecha discussion. 